When I built my basement music studio, I decided to add Cat6 Ethernet cables between the studio and two other rooms for audio over Ethernet connections. I don't expect to use these connections often, but it's cheap to install, so I thought it would be nice to have the connections available. Unfortunately, I didn't do enough research and didn't realize until after drywall had been installed that I used the wrong cables. I was able to reach the cables without damaging the double layers of drywall and installed for soundproofing. At the front end of the room, the HVAC is close enough to reach both wall plates. At the back of the room, I was able to use the gap between the doors and cutting open one of the non-soundproofing walls to make the switch. In order for audio over Ethernet to work properly, your Ethernet cables must be shielded. I tried using phantom power on the unshielded cables, and this is what it sounded like. On the cable itself, it should say either UTP or STP. UTP is unshielded twisted pairs, STP is shielded twisted pairs. You will also notice a metal cover on the ends of the cable, which is part of the shielding. After I replaced the cables, I did another sound test. After a little confusion, I realized that the keystones, the connections in the wall plate, need to be shielded as well. This makes a lot of sense in hindsight, as you need the shielding to be continuous from start to finish. After replacing the keystones, I tested every channel one by one, and I'm glad I did. I discovered a faulty keystone that was still noisy, even with the proper shielding. Cat 6 one AT2020 on mic one. I had a few extras, so I swapped in a new keystone, and this is the result. Cat 6 one AT2020 on connection one. Audio over Ethernet is an analog connection. This is different than digital Ethernet solutions such as Dante, AVB, SoundGrid, etc. This topic came up in a video over at Soundproof Your Studio, and there was a really great summary in the comments by Mech Pro Sound covering some of the considerations to keep in mind when using audio over Ethernet. One, each Ethernet cable provides four channels, which all share a ground. This means if phantom power is enabled, it will be enabled for all four channels. 2. Noise on one channel will likely mean noise on all four channels within the same Ethernet cable. 3. Digital solutions offer hundreds of channels per Ethernet cable with a host of other benefits. With all this in mind, I'm still happy using audio over Ethernet. I have a very simple home studio and I wanted to add these connections in case sometime in the next 20 to 30 years I had a use for it. I don't have the needs of a professional studio. I bought these breakout boxes from LixPro Audio on Amazon, and they convert the Ethernet cable into XLR connections. If you have shielded Cat5 or Cat6 cables, shielded keystones in the wall plate, and a breakout box like the ones that I bought, you have a complete solution. I installed four keystones per wall plate, giving me 16 channels. This means I can record a drum set on 12 channels and still have four channels left over to send a monitor mix to the drummer. Any combination of mics and headphone mixes will work, keeping in mind that you're limited to four channels at a time when choosing which direction the cable should go. Any of the breakout boxes I've seen have either all male or all female connections per box. I hope this is helpful for any of you building your own home studio. If there's any questions you have, drop them below. Please hit like and subscribe as this will help me share my journey with more fellow home studio builders.